This segment is brought to you by Jigmasters. Step up your game with high quality performance jigs, spinner baits, buzz baits, and more from Jigmasters.com. And always, when in doubt, get the jig out. Athletic Brewing Company is reimagining beer for the modern active adult. Their great tasting athletic craft brews let you enjoy the refreshing taste of craft beer without the alcohol or the hangover. You can enjoy them anytime, anywhere, and still be healthy, active, and at your best. And win AB1 North American Brewer of the Year at the International Beer Challenge, the judges were shocked to find out it was alcohol free. I mean, seriously? buzz-free beer that is better than the rest and to top it all off as part of athletic brewing two for the trails program two percent of all their sales are donated to causes and organizations that support healthy outdoor active living through park and trail cleanup and maintenance whether you've decided to cut alcohol out of your life for good for a night or just one drink Athletic Brewing Company provides an option without compromises that you're guaranteed to enjoy. To try their award-winning non-alcoholic beers, go to athleticbrewing.com. Use the code PNF20. You'll save 20% off your first order. There is free shipping on orders of two six-packs or more, or you can use their store finder to find it on shelves near you. Athletic Brewing. Brew without compromise. What's going on? Facebook Live. What up, YouTube? What's happening? Welcome back to another epic show. How you doing, Jay? I am superb. You? Look at that, Jay. Jay's got some energy into him. He's got some pep in his step tonight. I like that. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all you're getting out of me tonight. That's it. <laughs> we got a great show for you guys tonight. Uh, we got the boys at Pelican Cases in the house tonight. Um, but real quick, guys, gals, go down in that lower left-hand corner. Click the share button. Builds an audience. Gets epic guests like the guys tonight uh, on the show. So let's build it up. Let's get some folks in here. Uh, also, if you guys haven't seen, we do have um, the upcoming um, Paddle and Fin Trail Series events up on Tourney X. So if you're planning on fishing those events, get signed up. The Open is the first event. And the Clash of Clubs down at um oh my god dale hollow lake eastport marina shout out to richard and the guys at eastport for uh putting us up there they're gonna have a fishing expo they're gonna have uh, all kinds of vendors there live music food um the atmosphere there in the landscape is just absolutely yeah. beautiful it's uh, if you guys haven't seen the video we did when we were down there in october go check it out on the youtube page so Anything else? Did I miss anything? No, sir. Let's get to the real guest. We got Mr. Scott Jones and Nick Carlson in the house with us tonight from Pelican. How you doing, gentlemen? We're doing great. Thank hey, you. Brian. Hey, Jay. Sorry, up, sorry. The drinks and the snacks down in the green room aren't that great, but uh, hopefully you got through them. <laughs> They're digitally filling. Yeah, right. digitally <laughs> filling. I like that. Digitally, <laughs> digitally filling. You're right. I like it. I like it. Um, Guys and gals, as, you, as you're listening and watching tonight, if you guys have any questions for these guys, feel free to drop them in the comments and we'll get them answered for you. Um, but, gentlemen, let's kick it off. Like, how did Pelican get started? Uh, where are you guys based out of and, and all that good stuff? Give us a little history on that. Yeah. Well, l let me handle that, uh, Brian. Um, we got to, back in 1976, um, Pelican got its start uh, and it started from an entrepreneur by the name of Dave Parker. Okay. Uh, Dave is our founder and uh, he was an avid scuba diver and he wanted to be able to find, relocate uh, special sites underwater, specifically chasing lobsters. Uh, but to be able to relocate a spot was difficult because you got to remember back in 76, this was before GPS technology, for example. So he came up with an idea and drafted this up on a napkin, as the story's told, um, to develop an underwater marker buoy that could be used to mark a spot underwater and then be able to, through triangulation, relocate the spot. So I, I have a sample of this that I could like to show and tell. So what nice. you see here is a high-visibility float 
with 100 feet of polypropylene line attached with a lead weight secured with a circlip. So in its entirety, it's slightly negative, so a diver could take it underwater and not worry about it floating away. If you find that special spot, the lobster spot, the, the sunken treasure, you pull the pin, drop the weight, the float unravels and floats up to the surface, thus marking the spot. Then back up at the surface, then you can use through triangulation, refine that exact position. And that was the very first start uh, of this particular product. But the interesting thing is Dave wanted to um, find a, a manufacturer to make this, but his efforts failed, couldn't find anybody interested. So his friend goaded him into just doing it himself, and that's exactly what he did. So he started making these in his garage, selling a mail order with his wife. And that was the beginning of Pelican products. That's interesting. Yeah, you would uh, wouldn't think uh, it started with a pelican float. Uh, yeah. Many people aren't even aware of it today. But the part that really stuck was with our second product, and our second product was a diver's first aid kit. But the unique thing about the diver's first aid kit is it was in a very durable polymer O-ring sealed case that was perfect for the water environment. And what we found early on is there was more interest in the protective case than the contents being the first aid kit. And as Dave used to quote all the time, it didn't take a Harvard graduate to figure this one out, that we need to get in the case business. And lo and behold, that is by far the largest portion of our business today, um, as, as most people are aware. And that was the very start of the, the Pelican case line. But as Nick will share with you, um, we have grown and expanded into many, many other marketplaces now in a variety of products. Uh, very, very exciting. But it's an example of, uh, you know, we once started with a Pelican float that spawned the company. And then we branched off and, and diversified into a large, large uh, uh, other areas. And now we're a global company uh, dealing yeah. with a lot of different products. And I have the picture behind me that you see is back from 1970, about 1978, and that was myself back when I had hair. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my, the story goes, uh, Dave called me up. This is before I was an employee at Pelican. Dave called me up because I taught his son how to dive, and we sold the Pelican float and because I worked in the dive industry. And he says, hey, would you be willing to do a photo shoot? And I said, well, what kind of photo shoot? And he says, well, we wanted to pick the water integrity of our cases because now we had a line. We had, I think, three or four different models. And uh, so I said, absolutely. I said, but what Caribbean island are we going to for the photo shoot? And which he told me, well, how about my boat slip in the harbor? <laughs> so, yeah. You picture, got the short end of the stick on that one, my friend. I, I really did, yeah. And, but it got worse because I'm in the boat slip in front of these two photographers, you know, do this, do that, hold the case up, jump up and down, sit on it, whatever. And all of a sudden there was all this water splashing over the side of my head. And I had no idea what was going on. And I turned and looked and on the side of the dock, here's Dave with an oar in his hand and he's splashing all this water at me. And I go, what in the world are you trying to do? I said, you trying to drown me in the, in the, your boat slip? And he goes, no, no. He says, I want to make it look like you're out in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's you got to make it realistic. Yeah. The rest of the story was they took this silly image of me on this case and put it on a, on a picture that on a hang tag that went on every single Pelican case for over 28 years. Oh, wow. And uh, so I guess I'm a uh, world renowned now because of my face. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, I got replaced with a, a, a cuter girl, uh, a few years back, but uh, I, my legacy was 28 years of that. <laughs> hey, man, I mean, it's just as good as being in GQ magazine. What can I say? Yeah. You know? I mean, you get any of those weird moments with people and they just kind of look at you like, I know you from somewhere. You know? I, I, you know, I got that one time and it was a person that said he saw me in Australia 
And I said, at the time, I said, I'd never been to Australia and was able to tie it back to this picture on the Pelican case. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. We've had a few run-ins like that. Like, you guys are those podcast guys, right? You know, but I guess it's a little different, you know, just yeah. having your photo on a connected to a, a waterproof case. That's wild, man. That's cool though. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know the whole background story that it was, uh, you know, founded off of that one buoy. That's kind of interesting to see where you guys started and now all the things that you have your hands in. I know uh, we talked a little bit before we we went live here, you know, and I know uh, Jay and I have talked extensively about your guys's cases. You know, Jay's got one uh, for for one of his you know gun cases and. Uh, I know uh, Adam Chapman here in the chat said he loves the bow cases from you guys. Um, you know, I've I've used uh, a couple of your cases for fishing reels, things like that. You guys are big in a photography gear. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's you get your guys' <coughs> hands in everything. So, it's Nick, you been, to hear go ahead. About the bow, I'm sorry. It's interesting to hear about the bow case because that's relatively new. And we have been asked to do a boat case for many, many years, and we finally did. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's very, very nice. Yeah. I mean, you guys are, are diving into a bunch of different industries where, where your stuff is very uh, versatile. And uh, don't worry, guys and gals out there. I've already hounded them on making a fishing rod box. They said they're getting right on it. <laughs> it should be out next week. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding on that. But I did mention it to you guys. But uh, – you know, it, it it's cool to see what you guys have done and, and how far you've come. You know, I know um, we were talking about your website and it's just like, oh, they got this. Oh, they got this, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just you, you jump around. So, um, Nick, why don't, uh, what do you want to talk about first? I know you got a bunch of cool gizmos and gadgets and cases and all kinds of stuff in front of you, man. What do you want to start yeah. with first? Well, yeah, thanks, Brent. And uh, Thanks for having us again, guys. This is really cool. I mean, in California, Southern California terms, we say we're stoked. I'm definitely stoked. I'm super pumped. I'm excited. Um, Scott and I have been part of this brand for a long time. Like I said, almost 50 years between the two of us. And this is family to us. Um, you know, we've branched out into all of these different product verticals to serve things like uh, the hunting industry, right? Uh, outdoorsmen, uh, four wheels. Uh, technical packaging for your drones, for your uh, 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 for firearms and things of that nature. And you guys were talking about cases for reels. I keep my tuna reels in, in uh, Pelican cases, so I'm the same way about it. Um, Scott and I do the lighting side of the business, um, and uh, that's a, a pretty big pretty big segment uh, of our industrial and public safety sales. So my job uh, under Scott is to go and bring the message of Pelican, bring the Pelican family, as it were, um, to any, any, uh, anybody out there, our firemen, our police officers, uh, our military. These are all industries that are incredibly important to us. They're important to me. Um, and uh, I live and breathe Pelican just like Scott does. It's a great company to work for. Um, and, um, you know, wanted to share some of the different lighting product that we've got as well as you know, a new cooler that we've launched um, and talk about anything really else that, uh, you know, was top of mind with you guys. Yeah, for sure, man. So let, let's start with the lights. Uh, we'll start small and kind of move up. Um, I'm pulling it up here for you too. Um, you know, you guys got a whole array of flashlights and I mean, come on, who doesn't need a flashlight? You know, I mean, pages, pages. A well, some things to know, uh, Brian, about the Pelican is we're a U.S. based business um, and we employ U.S. labor. We've got factories at either ends of the country here, one in Torrance, one in uh, uh, West Massachusetts. Um, our lighting line is immense. We make lights for everything. Um, we like to pride ourselves on our lifetime guarantee. Uh, it's unsurpassed in the industries that we serve. Um, we do businesses with uh, the big companies out there as well as the small companies. So we're trying to uh, bring, um, you know, what a family means to uh, Americans in terms of a product uh, out to our customers and our consumers out there. So anything from like the tactical lights that you're seeing on your screen there, oh, yeah. manufacture <laughs> lighting tools for police officers, right? Um, very innovative, extremely durable, um, that serve the same needs for a police officer as they would 
be for somebody that's like, let's say, in home construction, uh, HVAC installation, uh, or you just need it in your pickup truck? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. We got a, a, a viewer right now didn't know they made lights. And I know the first time, you know, we talked, um, you know, off podcast, um, I had no clue either, like that you guys had lights. I'd always known the cases. I've seen the coolers and things like that. Um, and I had no clue you guys were, were making lights. And it's kind of, I mean, how long have you guys been, you know, doing the lighting stuff? About 40 years. Jeez. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the but the prevalence of the cases has much made us much more well known and, and it has a broader reach, I think. And because of that, it's not uncommon for us to hear that. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, about forty years, and uh, we make uh, a variety of lights for a lot of applications. Well, you mentioned the police officer, so I mean, there's no wonder I have been blinded many times. I would attest <laughs> to your flashlights being very bright. Many times? <laughs> no, not many times. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Come on, that was a joke. <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's certainly cool. I mean, and then. Uh, I see a f- like a f- almost like a floodlight back there in your background, Nick. Is that something you guys are doing as well? Yeah, we've been manufacturing remote area lighting systems. We pioneered this industry, Brian. So this is a ton of light. You know, you're going to get out of these systems that we manufacture numerous different styles, sizes, and uses. This is a rechargeable system. It can be brought onto a work site. It can be taken out to a campsite. You can use it for photography. Um, like I stated, it's rechargeable. The head collapses on it and you can sling it over your shoulder and run with it. It'll give you up to 24 hours of light. And this is just one of about 10 different models we make. So hmm. that's very cool. And that there's a, I'm trying to pull it up here. So give me a second, but there's like a case connected to the bottom of that light, right? So is that a battery in there? And it's like, yeah, you can just basically, uh, you know, Put go on camping, there. something like that. Bring it in. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do it justice here, but the battery itself removes, and you've got a power pack here, right? Oh, that's strange. Charge secondary power packs and have those on the side. Mm. Then the light goes back together and it travels that one, yeah. as necessary, like this. All right, this is our 9490. Like I said, it's one of a number of different models. Um, The batteries themselves have LED readouts, so you can tell how much juice you have. And very stable platforms. It'll sit in any type of uh, environment that you need to deploy it to. And then once deployed, you get about six feet out of this particular model. Others vary. And then the system has an LED readout on the or an LCD readout, excuse me, on the uh, on the device body that tells me how much time I've got left and how much I'm running and if I'm running at high, medium, or low. And on top of all of that, if I want to, I can control it off of my phone. So it's Bluetooth compatible. <laughs> it's slick. I got the uh, I got the LED screen pulled up here 6, on the page. Six thousand lumens. Six thousand lumens. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's six thousand lumens is out of one head because you mentioned a case. There are two models that we make uh, that actually break down and go into one of the Pelican cases. And that one houses a two head version, which is 6,000 lumens per head. So that's a total of 12,000. And then we also have a four head version that produces over up to 24,000 lumens. And all of this is portable. <laughs> so. That's so bright. Be like being on the sun, man. Dude, it's like almost, <laughs> if you ever wanted to become a CSI. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure like that's part of part of where that gets utilized a lot, right? Yeah, yeah the, the applications is half of the, the excitement for us. And and I'll share one quick story on behalf of our remote area lights. Remote being the key word, is everybody remembers the US airlines that landed in the Hudson? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Made a movie about it and so forth. Well, after they got everybody off the plane, they needed to extract the fuel out of the fuel tanks and the wings. And it's at night. And here you got this plane floating in the Hudson. How are they going to illuminate that area to, to work with? So they used two of our area lights that they just laid on top of the wing and illuminated the whole work area. And they were able to go to work on it. So that oh, wow. was that's pretty killer. 
Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And if I, if I could uh, real quick go back to the, the lighting on behalf of law enforcement, I wanted to make mention uh, two things specifically, and there's a whole bunch of stories, but back to applications. Um, we have the largest police department in the state of California that we're, we're headquartered that uses our flashlight that we actually designed and developed per their spec, and that's for a Los Angeles police department. Oh, and wow. that was 10 years ago. And then the, we also provide a, a custom designed flashlight for the largest police department in the country in New York Police Department. Hmm. So That's awesome. Pretty exciting things that we got to participate in. Heck yeah. I know uh, Matt Gibson, our good friend, is in the house, and he said that uh, that uh, light pack would be great on a kayak trailer for early morning launching before the sun's up. Mm -hmm. I like it. I, you know? Matt just burned up his one good idea for the week. Yeah. Matt, you can go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's his claim to fame. One good idea for the week. But uh, you burned it up, my man. But thank you for burning it up here. But uh, no, that's killer, man. Like like we we talked about, you know, I I had no clue you guys were, you know, that deep in the, in the lighting and stuff. And then, you know, I had done some digging into it and uh, <laughs> searched around. And I was just kind of floored by how much you guys had to offer great to hear it, it's a lot of stuff um and brian i'll tell you it's practical for what you guys do as well as you know what we do in the industrial commercial space so yeah. it's like this 7060 that scott had referred to as you know a tactical light this is what we this is the model that we manufacture for new york as well as a number of other departments um it has functionality like low light so you got red and a green led right and then for <clears throat> police departments the holster actually functions as a wand so it allows them to direct traffic safely right so it's another safety wow. feature there but i use it low light aboard <laughs> cabin or ship or if i'm running out of san diego or something like yeah. that yeah okay so it's it's practical for usage, you know, um, in the outdoors, in sport fishing, and things of that nature. Plus, USB rechargeable, so I can get power anywhere on the boat with just uh, by linking it to my USB cord. So does it have like a US uh, or not a USB, but a, a lithium battery in it, like rechargeable battery, or is it lead acid battery? Or is it? It's both? actually a, a flexible fuel system where I can replace the. Um, rechargeable lithium ion battery and i can put uh disposable cells into it and run it that way if i wanted to dude that's, that's pretty, pretty slick yeah yeah that's we try huge. To think all of these things in terms of innovation that's how we go to market with our big customers like <laughs> chevron and uh united airlines and uh, uh nypd is is mm -hmm. what are our competitors doing what what do these guys really need so um you know that's we're trying to keep everything in mind and get as much from the customers possible when we when we bring forth new product. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. Awesome. That's definitely important to be flexible. Cause I mean, especially, you know, you get situations somewhere and somebody's run off that one lithium battery and that thing's going to run out, especially cause they're probably using it at like max, yeah. you know, capacity. And then they got to have a backup and that's, that's important. You know, and I look for that in batteries too. It's always nice when you have that option of like, Hey, well you can always recharge it. But then if, you know, if you run out, you can always go to three triple A's or, you know, two double A's or something. Yeah. Well, one of the other features on that comment, and, and this kind of ties to the fact that most people that use our lighting tools use it to do their job. So whether they're law enforcement, military, firefighters, safety, industrial are good examples. We've incorporated in that particular model and many, many others, something that seems like a uh, a no-brainer, if you will, but the technology years ago wasn't available, but it certainly is today, and that's battery level indication. So there's a fuel gauge built into these lights that show you what where the battery level is at all times, so you know. And it's, it's no different than driving your car without a gas gauge. So. That's pretty killer, man. We got uh, our Justin Staley in the house. He said, Pelican cases saved my gear when I was headed overseas for deployment. Thank you for for your service my friend much appreciated thanks justin and then we got somebody else using a, a portable jump box in his pelican for his fish finder not mm -hmm. sure what that is so he's probably got um it's 
It sounds like he's just got a spare battery, or he's actually got uh, one of those. Uh, uh, what's it called? Fuel or the jumper cell or something, yeah, yeah. or like just In one of those case. spare cells. Yeah, yeah, In yeah. Like case. I said, I mean, like, well, that's the thing too. Uh, you know, if 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 you know, none of you have ever been introduced to any of these more. I would call them high end cases because most of them are waterproof, from my experience. And I utilize one uh, for my drone on um, on my kayak. So. And we're so close to the water, it's super important to keep the drone completely dry. You got a drone? I do. <clears throat> oh, I might. oh, you've used it once or twice. Uh, it's funny. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, but any, any of your gear, I mean, a lot of this stuff uh, is very, um, it's very specific, but it's also, you know, for anything you can fit into it. Yeah. You know, but yeah, super high end stuff. Definitely check out their cases and their lights. Um, I don't think you'll, uh, you know, I think I think you'll definitely be impressed with them. I mean, they're very tough. You can definitely toss this stuff. <laughs> you don't have to be careful with it, is what I'm saying. You yeah, know? Jay is not gentle with objects. No, that's why I don't buy like super expensive fishing gear because I always throw it around. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, in terms of the, the the categories, Brian and Jay, that we're we're focusing on, and we've got the the case line. So you got the different pelican case lines, right? And we got Vault now, which is more of an entry level style of pelican case, has virtually the same durability that the foam that we're known for, uh, but it's at a lower price point for our consumers that you know um, aren't ready to pony up, you know, uh, you know, a lot for maybe a custom case or a, a larger pelican case. So the Vault lines. Uh, been really popular. Then you got your Pelican Air, which has uh, been incredibly popular for us, and the Pelican Storm and Classic, which is we're all most familiar. Most of us are familiar with the Classic cases. Now mm -hmm. you got the Storm cases, uh, which have a different style of uh, uh, a latch system to them, a little bit of a different finish. And then the Air cases, which we effectively took almost 30% of the weight out. So for those of us that are traveling by airplane, maybe not last year or maybe not this year, but that are traveling by commercial air fly a lot, those air cases are really mm -hmm. awesome. Um, so I can tell you when I go to Mexico, man, I put everything in a 1535 air case um, and I get it down there and I don't get dinged with any, uh, um, uh, you know, over baggage mm -hmm. overage charges <laughs> from Alaska or from, uh, from Delta. So that's huge. Yeah. That, I never would have thought huge. of that because – I use one for uh, my handgun when I travel, uh, when I fly, well, whenever that is, you know, ever again. But, um, I mean, in, in you know, again, it's one of those cases. It's kind of basic, but you cut it out to fit, you know, whatever you're bringing with and, you know, uh, follow the, uh, uh, what's it called, all the rules of uh, the TSA and everything. So these cases are big enough to do that, and plus they're approved cases by the TSA. Right. Right, exactly. And, and on top of that, we have a, uh, a series of um, bags now. And I, I use uh, some of our duffels as range bags. So I can pack all my ammo and everything I need uh, in the Pelican soft, uh, soft uh, bag styles. And I can take those to the range. And it's virtually the same quality uh, and uh, it's the performance that you expect out of our brand. That's huge. Yeah, it's cool. God, you guys got so much well, stuff. Big parts of our protective cases is the interior um, because you know we offer the case without foam. We offer it with foam, but then we also have padded dividers and something that we also own called Trek Pack, and that allows you to basically customize the interior to accommodate whether it be a drone, fishing equipment, or whatever. Nick, I know you have a your your reels in one of the cases that you customize. I don't know if you have that there to show and tell or not. But. It's a little bit too big to to get back here. I have a Pelican case that has a custom foam in, in it, and um, I put my reels into it in that way. After I clean them, I get back from a trip, throw them back in the case, and um, I know before I need to put mono back on the reel that it's ready to go, you know. So, um, yeah, for for – you know, folks that are, you know, you got to spend anything expensive, anything that you're, you know, we build this stuff to protect what, uh, what the gear that, you you know, it's, that's closest to you. Yeah, I got this travel case pulled up and that's pretty slick, man, because it's, it's almost like a, a, a suitcase where you could, you know, and it's got little individual bags that go inside it, you know. You could throw your clothes in there along with your fishing gear and everything else you need, man. That's uh, that's 
pretty slick. I like that. Yeah. You know, hey, well, uh, back to another story. Um, we attend a lot of trade shows, obviously, in the past, and and uh, one of them being the uh, AUSA show that's held in uh, Washington D.C. It's a big Army show every year, and this goes back about ten years ago. And I showed up for the first day of the show, having not been part of the team that set up the booth. And I looked in the back of the booth, and I saw a case way larger than anything I knew that we ever made before. Come to find out that we possess the ability to do what's called cut and weld. And this is uh, for a military application or a custom application, if you will, where they molded multiple cases, cut the ends off and molded the center sections to create this elongated case. And so the, I was enamorated by the size of the case until I was able to walk up because I was dying to find out what in the world was in it. And when I looked inside, I was even more more amazed, but it was a cruise missile. Oh, and, wow. Jeez. Yeah, if you can think about something that size, but you don't just take a cruise missile and throw it in a box, even if you have a box that big. So the part <laughs> that was the most intriguing was the, the support system inside to support this cruise missile. And that just blew my mind. It was amazing. Uh, uh, with this coiled spring system that we manufactured and created ourselves as a custom uh, development for the military. Things like helicopter blades for another example of some of our cut and weld capabilities. But the, the bottom line is you can't ignore the interior of the cases. Sometimes is just as important as the case itself. And we have to look at both sides of that. And we provide solutions for just about everything you can imagine. That's pretty pretty cool, man. I I knew you guys made some bigger stuff, you know, and I don't know. I couldn't imagine the size of that case. If you had to guess, would that thing weigh without the missile? <laughs> Thank God for forklifts. Yeah. <laughs> so you say you didn't carry that one in through the front door. <laughs> that's pretty pretty cool, and I know that's like a huge part of your guys' uh, uh, business model, you know, is you, you guys do a lot of stuff with – um you know government um you know as far as military goes you know first responders things like that and that's huge man i mean it it helps make those guys and gals lives much easier so shout out to you guys and thank you for that you know that's uh that's huge man yeah that, that's an honor for us uh, when we have that opportunity and back to another quick lighting story because nick was involved with this with the u.s navy um <laughs> we we're looking for a new design for four different colored lights, wanded lights, to be used on carrier decks to guide the aircraft at night. And uh, so we were able to develop that. That was over 10 years ago, four different colors, because each color represents a different a person of responsibility on the carrier deck. And the challenge with that is the wands that we use in a lot of our lights are detachable. But in this uh, application, they couldn't have it. It had to be an integral part of the light. So we made a one uh, that was integral, and uh, uh, we were able to deliver that down in San Diego on the first delivery. And uh, we just received numerous orders just in the last six months from the Navy for more of these, which is real encouraging because I know Nick and I were both part of that uh, process from the get-go. That's very cool, man. That's super cool. Did you guys get to hang out on the, the aircraft carrier at all? Well, I I think I, I pulled rank on Nick on this one, I think, because they asked for the first uh, delivery to be delivered. Um, uh, I, I, I went down and delivered it, and uh, um, he, he says, would you like a tour of the ship? Of which, of course, I said yes. And <laughs> the other part of that story was he goes, follow me. So he took me down this hallway that went down to the, the steam catapult that they used to launch, which is below the decks, of course. But I stopped when I, we hit that first hallway because it was completely lined with firefighting helmets, which obviously fire on, on board ships is very, very important and taken seriously. And everybody on board is a potential firefighter at that point. But every single one of these helmets was mounted with a lime green Pelican flashlight, which they use for firefighting applications. And uh, again, Nick was a big part of, of that as well. So that was a, a, a double win for us. But I wanted to go out on a cruise, but they would, wouldn't take me up on that. <laughs> they probably would have if you would have picked up the fuel bill. 
<laughs> I don't know if you could afford that, but <laughs> yeah, I I could only imagine what it would cost to take a hour cruise in an aircraft carrier. The amount of fuel that that thing burns, man. Those things are just massive. You ever seen an aircraft carrier? Yeah, not up close, but I mean, oh, you know, dude, it's huge. I'm sure it's like ginormous. It's, it's one planes. of those situations where you're like, wow. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure. That big? <laughs> it's a it's a city, they say. Yeah, you know? pretty much. That's yeah. crazy. You got to get to San Diego more often, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah, I haven't made my all the way through uh, Arizona yet, so maybe one of these <laughs> days. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like I've done Utah, Arizona. It's like I've never done the PNW or like Cali at yeah, all. Yeah. I don't know why. It just hasn't happened. I've been to California twice. Twice, I think. <laughs> never been to Arizona or New Mexico, though. So gotcha there. <laughs> yeah, nice places. Right. Idaho. Spent a lot of time in Nevada. Yeah, uh, mm. Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, that's cool, man. That's super cool. Um one thing I wanted wanted to bring up too, and I'll I'll share it up here on the screen too. You guys do some cool um, backpacks and stuff as well, and uh, the one I got pulled up here, um, it's kind of cool because it's got the dividers in it and stuff like that, so I can see guys throwing like fishing reels in there, you know, maybe a little bit of tackle stuff like that. I know it was designed more for camera gear, but. Um, just another cool thing that you guys do is you do a lot of travel bags and stuff. Yep. We, uh, that's uh, one of my bags right there. The S115 is, um, you can see the back slot there for the laptop or for an iPad. And then yeah, you can yeah. see a number of different um, reels uh, as well as a little bit of equipment uh, in the bag itself. It's a fantastic pack. Um, and those dividers inside, they are, you can move them around. It's crush proof, virtually crush proof. I don't think anything's really crush proof from what I've seen from uh, uh, baggage handlers. But um, I mean, they're, it's completely weatherproof um, and it's really designed for folks on the go and that are tossing packs in and out of pickups, in and out of the back of a tent, in and out of the back of a Humvee or something like that. So I typically, I'll take something like that if I go fishing uh, in Mexico or something like that. I, I'll take one of those, bring my reels on board with me rather than send them below. Um, a little bit safer that way. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Fully man. agree with that. Do you? I do. You better. I do. <laughs> it's like, you know, there's a lot of things that you change when you start flying with gear. Yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. And that's the thing, you know, it's always, um, you know, I know a lot of guys, you know, struggle. Like, what should I throw this in? What should I throw that in? You know, because like you said, you touched on it is, you know, baggage carriers, man, they're so brutal on people's stuff. They don't care. They just throw it on the conveyor belt and up it goes. And, mm -hmm. you know, they don't know what's in there. But, you know, you got five grand worth of camera equipment or, you know, a couple thousand dollars worth of reels and stuff like that. And a bag like that, oh, man, yeah. at least, you know, it's uh, somewhat protected. You know, that's super huge. Yeah, I think especially, too, when it even comes to the rods, you touched on that, but um, just having, like, you know, what is it? I think the Southwest and I can't remember the other one that still will let you take two-piece rods on the uh, – um, Yeah, as a carry-on, as yeah. an extra carry-on even. So it could be, like, your third one, too, and they won't even care about it. Um, but I think a case – you could probably benefit from a, a little carrying case like that, too. But, yeah, I mean – I mean, the TSA is so awful with stuff, yeah. you know, and it's like, you, you just got to figure it out, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Very on the, uh, on the, on the, on the cases, one of the things that I think Scott and I saw a lot, at least a few years back was um, passengers trying to identify their Pelican cases in the carousels. You get all these black cases floating around. <laughs> um, and so we were listening to the marketplace and they were like, you know what? I picked up this photographer's stuff and I got halfway to Chicago before I realized it wasn't my case. So, you know, we we're able to manufacture being many of manufacturer here in the States, we're able to do um, manufacturing a number of different colors. So our cases are available in a number of different colors. And on top of that, um, we offer uh, nameplate services as well as, um, uh, spots to put your tag, your business card, things of that nature. And just like your guys' laptops, 
Um, I love seeing Pelican cases at LAX or O'Hare or wherever we're traveling that are covered in decals. That just shows love, man. It just really does show somebody loves that, that, that case. Heck yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, you usually see it typically with a lot of photographers and stuff and mm -hmm. these, uh, I just pulled up, you know, <clears throat> these are the different divider kits that they offer for some of the cases as well to protect your gear, split it up. You know, they got it for all the different cases. It's pretty slick. And then I'm sure those dividers, you can kind of move them over and in, in and out where you need them, right? That's what it looks like. Yeah. So that's the Trek pack Scott was talking about. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Very cool, man. Well, well I'm sure. Go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. Just that they're customizable. I know those images kind of made it look like a, a cookie cutter. They're one in the same, but you can configure those things however you want. It comes as a kit. Uh, for your case and then you can configure it for whatever uh, objects or items you want for the case that's slick it's almost like a like a tackle box that's got mm -hmm. the little individual slider dividers and stuff in there you can basically do the same thing with the internal part of your case that's very yeah, the cool. alternative is like a custom foam which we do for drones uh we do it for firearms um any type of template, um, you know, that there's quite a bit out of out there, like let's say a rifle, a handgun, a uh, fishing reel. That, there's custom foam available for that, but if you're not sure what you're gonna travel with, or you're not sure, uh, or you're gonna change it up, let's say, um, that's where the Trek pack, the divider sets, the pick and pluck foam, uh, that's where that all comes in. So we're, we're trying to make our case systems as, um, as flexible as possible to consumers out there, because we've got, a thought, we've got millions of different customers that have got audio equipment like you guys, they've got computers like you guys, they've got dive equipment like Scott, they've got fishing reels like me, firearms like our police officers. Uh, the, 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 the list is effectively endless, you know? I can put my gold bars in there, and then when I turn my gold in for cash, I could change it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, it's cool that, that you guys can – have have it, it seems like you've thought of so much you know that goes into it you know you could virtually make it for whatever scenario you know like you said you know you never know what you're traveling with mm -hmm. you know you may be going on a fishing trip this week business trip trip the next week you know hunting whatever whatever it may be it's just cool that it's very customizable it's important to listen to the customers um and it's important to make sure that those customers um, are seeing what you're doing so that they can, you know, um, they can take advantage of, uh, of us as a manufacturer here. Mm -hmm. Scott? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's very true. The, uh, again, back to the, the customization uh, options that are out there, it's, it's, it is endless, just like you said, Nick. And um, it's nice to be able to provide a variety of, of options to people. Um, and again, at the end of the day, the bottom line is protecting the thing that they value, whatever mm -hmm. it be. Yeah, it's super huge. Yeah. You know what we need to do, we need to get a Pelican case for our mics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at that case over there and it makes me feel like that thing's cheap. That's why the well, one it mic's is. broke. <laughs> That's why the one mic's broke. It's funny. They give you these, <laughs> they give you these nice mics and they, give, they always give you this cheap case. Yeah. They don't put any time into the case, yeah. you know? I never understood that. I like it. We have to give Sure and Sennheiser and those guys a call out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I don't know what these guys are thinking. Some yeah. of them, they're real hokey, man. Yeah. $200 <laughs> mic, $20 case. Yeah. Makes sense, yeah. guys. Makes sense. Like, I'm afraid <laughs> to drop the case. <laughs> yeah, I am too. I'm always afraid when we're taking trips and we bring the mics and stuff with throwing it in and out of the truck. But yeah. I mean, that's what's cool about what you guys do, man. Like, you wouldn't have to worry about it, you know? um that's yeah we gotta invest we gotta invest man hey well, Brian. yeah go ahead man how much time do we have left uh as much time as you need yeah all right i was gonna uh touch on something i was thinking to myself um regarding uh fishing and the things that i do and one of um the innovations that we came up with in lighting a, a couple years back was something we call correct color and correct color is effectively, it's, a, it's an LED, and Scott can describe it better than I can, but it's an LED that gives you better perspective on colors that you're looking at. Um, I use it for tying monofilament to fluorocarbon. 
I use it for fish scales and cleaning out the bottom of your kayak or something like that. Scott, I'm going to grab one of these so they can see the difference. Tell them about CRI and stuff. Yeah, so, so this has to do with what's called CRI, which many people are like unaware of, but it stands for Color Rendering Index. And all that basically means is how uh, accurate of a color rendering does an artificial light source provide. So if you use the sun as a benchmark, the sun represents 100%. Okay. The interesting story here is if you know the, the transition in lighting of a few years back has transitioned from incandescent to LED. LED. Yeah, yeah. Incandescence provided a very high level of color rendering, actually about 95%, so about 5% less <laughs> would provide. But the interesting thing that very few people are aware of is when we transition into LEDs for flashlights, the LEDs that were being provided and manufactured only offered about a 70 to 75% color rendering index. So for those people, that were uh, valued, and not that everybody would value color rendering, nobody wants to be duped and see artificial colors of something, but some applications are more important than others. And you, you have things like, think of an electrician that, is that a blue wire or a green wire? Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, another really interesting one is the medical industry, and they've brought that uh, up in, to our attention as well. The color of blood tells a, a doctor like what the oxygenation of the blood is or well, they need a true color rendering of that so there's a number of different applications whether it be an electrician in a medical industry of people on an inspection line and so forth and so we were able to research this and basically make a long story short we offer a whole family of flashlights that use LED technology because we didn't want to go back to incandescent because of all the benefits that LED provide. But these LEDs are unique in the sense that they offer that 90, 95% color rendering as similar to what uh, incandescents used to provide, but with all the benefits in an LED. So uh, again, it's more options than other. There is one trade-off and the trade-off is in lumens. So there's about a 10% less lumen value in these high CRI LEDs, which is the reason why everybody was chasing lumens and that's why they created these LEDs and, and were foregoing the color rendering. But the technology with LEDs has gone through the roof. Yeah. And now it's like the, the police light we're talking about, it's a thousand lumens in the palm of your hand, which is just crazy. So to, I give, up, it. to give up 10% of the lumen value is almost insignificant if color rendering is more important. So again, there's a whole series that, that Nick was referring to that we offer. Can you guys kind of see the difference here? So you've got the standard LED that we're all used to, right? You can't see the one in your left hand. No. And then this is correct color LED right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it almost looks a little more yellow than white, so to speak. Exactly. It's warmer. Emulate so the colors, and they really pop. Yeah. Well, and, and I and I remember like early on with LEDs, um, hunters were having issues like seeing blood, yeah, like tracking, it, yeah, because it would get washed out and everything. And I'm sure what you guys got would definitely correct that, especially from your comment about the doctors. Yeah, well, the, the, the one other application that kind of started this whole thing was a, a fire department came to us with their wild and firefighting team that were clearing brush at night and couldn't discern between lush green and burnt black. Mm. And, but they remember being able to do it when they had their incandescent headlamps. And so they mm. wanted to go develop them a, a, another headlamp out of incandescence. Well, we've walked away, we've discontinued all incandescence. We moved on to LEDs. So when we were able to provide these high CRI LEDs and a headlamp for these guys, it, it solved their problem. They were completely satisfied. And that's what started this whole family that we developed. It makes sense. So, you know, my background, I was in, I was in the hardwood flooring business for about 16 years. And I had this one customer. She had just put all new LED trims in her house. During the day, we did some stain samples on her floor. She approves one. 
stain her floor, finish it. She sees it during the day and she's like, Brian, it's so beautiful. At night with the LED bulbs, she's like, this isn't the color I picked. You switched my stain color. And I'm like, <laughs> look, lady, here's the can. It's empty. Like I did exactly what you did, but it's from that LED. And I know like even in your home now, um, a lot of those new LED trims, they have an adjustable setting where you can go from white to that soft white. It's, it's basically adjusting kind of like what you've guys done for, for two different lights almost. Yeah, well, well not, not to confuse things, but what you're referring to is, is, is called color temperature. Yes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're correct. Yeah. And that is not one and the same as CRI or color rendering index. You okay. Can, you can vary the color temperature in, 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 but as in, in an independent of the color rendering. I guess is okay. what I'm trying to say. I got um, you. Yeah. So, so to give you just a, a number example, uh, incandescence about 2,700 Kelvin is the temperature range, color temperature range that they use. And I think, as Nick just showed, that's about what that LED is. That's very similar to the same color temperature as incandescence, very yellowish. Yeah. Relative right, right. To the other, the white LEDs we have, they're running at about 7,000 Kelvin. Oh, geez. A very white blue, if you will. Oh. Yeah, uh, uh, but now to be able to have that option with an LED to not only change the color, <clears> the <throat> color rendering, it, it, boy, we have lots of options available to us now. So the technology is affording us to provide and produce really exciting stuff. That's crazy. I yeah. would have never even thought of that. Well, I don't think anyone's doing that. No, I mean, or anything close to it. I would imagine because all you ever see is lumens. Matter of fact, yeah. I just bought a headlamp this year too, and. Brian saw it because we while we were at hunting, <laughs> it's a thousand lumens and it's, it's so sp- bright. It's a spotlight on his forehead. Yeah, I mean it's it's like you know it's basically like that that pickup that's coming down the road with those yeah, new he's, halogens. Or- he was standing on shore. <laughs> the oar boat would think he was the lighthouse. Yeah, it was so bright, but I could see how it would definitely. I mean that was just for visibility, of course. But yeah, you know you're not going to get any like I don't know you you know detail on that. I mean that things gonna be blaring so much. Yeah, it almost. That that super bright light almost just like, like you said, those guys couldn't tell the difference between like what a dark green and a black, mm-hmm. or something, and it just totally flushes out all the color. Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's a difference right. between a, a lo- having a lot of light. Sorry, guys, it's a difference between having um, a lot of light, and I think consumers and especially professionals are looking at better light now. Yeah, right? that's crazy. Yeah. I wouldn't. You probably had to go make that jump, right? It's like. Everybody thought this was the direction. Then somebody went, "Hey, wait a second, there's something missing," you know. So, like, you know, to your point, to your story, and here we are. Yeah, you know, that's cool, man. You know, I, I definitely, you know, I'll definitely be checking out your know, your headlamp for sure. Yeah, they got tons of them too. Yeah, plus I love the the durability side of your guys' stuff. I mean, I'm sure, <clears throat> you know, it's gonna be like damn near, you know, indestructible in uh, most circumstances. And then, well, that ties into our lifetime guarantee that uh, Nick had mentioned. Um, we're very proud of that. And uh, you have to have good quality product to start with. Otherwise, we'd never be able to support it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. That's very cool, man. Well, I know the one thing we we kind of saved for the last, and it's it's one of, one of your newer products, is the, uh, the coolers. Yeah. Let me grab the 14-quart cooler here, guys. So definitely a step up from your brand name, um, you know, long-term coolers. Um, that's just who Pelican is. Uh, we're more of a Cadillac company, right? Um, we just launched this 14-quart cooler, um, perfect for lunches, six-pack, something like that. Um, you're going to have um, – it's armored all the way around. It's the first in its category, in any category, I think, to actually have not only a dry tray in it, but – it's got a protected area too for cell phones, electronics, things you need to keep out of uh, you know wet areas. It's oh, got cool. to be sealed. Um, we designed it with a bottle opener right in the magnetic bottle opener, nevertheless, right in the lid. <laughs> um, and for those of us that get Charlie horses when we're cruising to the campsite with uh, something heavy, we have a cutout <laughs> on it. So we faceted this thing, and we're thinking about. All of those things that you guys would, you know, encounter, you want done better. 
Um, so we're thinking about that. I think ice retention on these is at least three days. Um, it's a great product, and this is the smallest whole heart cooler that we have right now. Um, we make them, I believe, up to 250 quarts, really big. Um, and those don't even have wheels. They have forklift provisions, you know? So, um, but again, really high end stuff, um, uh, you know, readily available. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking for that, co uh, that customer that, um, you know, has really, uh, uh, had it with uh, disposable, uh, you know, uh, hardware store bought coolers and, um, they're interested in something that uh, they're going to have forever. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I got, a, you know, the website pulled up here, man, and it's cool. The guy's got the silverware on the inside of the lid. The guy's opening the bottle. He's got the dry tray down there with the oranges and stuff like that. That's slick, oh, yeah. man. I haven't seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. That's it pretty awesome. Looks like it'd be nice to throw on the back of the kayak, you know. Yeah, I know uh, Justin Staley's in the chat, and he said it looks like it'd be the perfect seat in his new canoe. Yeah. You know, that's what a lot of guys are doing nowadays is they're taking the seats out of their kayaks and, and bringing so, coolers and either using the cooler as, you know, a tackle box or um, throwing their lunch in there, using it as a seat, things like that. I mean. Yeah, and or both. <laughs> yeah, both. Yeah. 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 Yeah, guys, are, I saw one guy had a hack where he used that, that starboard, that is that plasticky stuff, the cutting yeah. board stuff, and made, you know, basically separated his cooler. So you had ice on one side and uh, some cool packs, and whatever, with some drinks and sandwiches. And then he had some gear on the other side for uh, for fishing. Makes sense. Yeah, because a lot of guys will stand on these, too, from the kayaks now. Oh, yeah. yeah. They give, yeah, you know. It's perfect to fit into a Hobie or whatever you guys are going to fish. Don't say the H word on our show. Yeah, no H word. <laughs> <laughs> We're just kidding. Yeah, nah. Our time. We're just yeah, kidding. We love. We love you, Bobby. You want me about the language? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the no. Hobie, Hobie's a good boat. We're just yeah, kidding. Yeah, We're just kidding. Around. But uh, yeah, that's that's cool, man. I didn't dig that far into the 14 quart. So, are the bigger size coolers the same way? Like as far as like lids and insets, or is it just this personal 14 quart cooler? The 14 quart cooler has the separated lid. Um, the storage, we do have dry storage uh, options for the medium size and I think even to the larger size. Um, but the bigger they get, the heavier they get. Um, uh, we try and keep it the weight reduced as much as possible um, because we know, you know, ice weighs a lot, water weighs a lot. But the best thing about these things is, um, you know, even on hot summer, Illinois, Missouri days, you can pack these things full of ice, keep it closed, keep it in the back of your pickup or on your kayak. And it's going to keep that ice, keep that uh, food, those beverages, whatever you got in there, maybe, you know, fish or something like that. It's going to keep it frozen cool for days, you know, um, you know, not hours. Uh, you can reuse it if you're if you're out there for quite some time. If you're going to be out there for a weekend or something, you don't have to run back and forth to. Uh, the grocery stores to grab to grab ice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I pulled up the uh, forty-five quart with the wheels on it. You know, um, that'd be the the perfect cooler going down to the beach with the family. You know, that's what Scott did today. That's his suntan. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, it's cool. I've seen one of one of the big ones. I think it's what is it a hundred quart that you guys have or something like that. Ninety-five. This one. It, it's huge. Yeah, look at these, dude. They got the, the oh, forklift the, cutouts, it, just like they said. I think it was the 150 quart <laughs> I saw on the back of like a big yeah. saltwater boat or something somewhere. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. I mean, that yeah. thing's yeah. huge. Huge. I, I can't that's the parts industry. These things are uh, U.S. made, so we have an edge over some of our brand name competitors that you see, you know, in a, in the marketplace. Um, and like I said, we bring a lot of that knowledge that we learn from guys like like you and your listeners, and we bring it to the factory here. And we 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 make it practical, we make it real. Um, so I use them for stuff. One of the most interesting, going back to San Diego again, one of the most interesting things I found for our coolers, our midsize um, coolers, the thirty quart, thirty uh, forty five, was uh, barbecue enthusiasts, real barbecue, not griller, barbecue enthusiasts use them as brining pits. So you oh, can wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, in there and then put your turkey in there. It's big enough to hold it. It keeps the temperature just right. So when you put it in the smoker, everything turns out better than uh, the guy that's competing next to you. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, we need to go to that guy's house for Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> I'm starting to drool over here. No, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought of that. I smoke some meat from time to time, but yeah, I wouldn't have never thought to do it in a cooler like that. That's pretty crazy. And then you guys got like a, a soft pack cooler too for like a day trip or small hiking trip, stuff like that. It's very cool. And the pricing on it's pretty, pretty. It's on point. Yeah. Pretty on point, like compared to some of the other brands out there that are just ridiculous. You know what I mean? You're going to uh, have it forever. I mean, there's yeah. no, these mm -hmm. things are indestructible. We make stuff to last a lifetime, to protect all you value. This is, this is, this is the real, this is the real thing. So, and you know what? Um, we're happy with what we manufacture. We love our customers. Um, we got a great environment that we work in. Like I said, Scott and I have been together for a long time. We love working together here at Pelican. Um, and we're passionate about what we do. We're passionate about the brand. And we're able to, you know, share this stuff with you guys, which makes it even more special. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, very nice. Makes a day out that much better some. I like it, man. Well, did we miss anything that you guys wanted to touch on, man? We'll we'll open it up to you. I think we drilled you guys with quite a few questions. I mean, if there was anything we missed um, or anything else that you wanted to throw out there, man, go One ahead. One other category was uh, in the cell phone covers and tablet covers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A whole other uh, category that we offer uh, protection for. And again, uh, obviously, smartphones are so prevalent. Uh, you know, iPads and other tablets and so forth. So we have a whole array of uh, products available for those those items as well. So, Are these that. like the uh, shockproof, like you drop it, it's going to protect the phone type deal? And then I see it, there's a marine active, so I imagine that's waterproof. Yeah, completely sealed and waterproof, correct, yeah. All mil spec design. Um, yeah, that they're, they're different styles too, depending on what type of coverage you want, what type of protection you want. So if you guys are going to be using it on the lake, kayaking, in the surf, something like that, we have options for that, protector voyager, so on and so forth. And then if you're like doing more office time than fishing this year, we've got options, you know, that are, um, you know, uh, just uh, limited impact resistance, depending on what price point you're looking for. You guys even have the EMS battery too. That's pretty slick. Yeah. Man. Well, I'm gonna have to explain to my wife later why we're broke. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. She'll get over it. It's like a never ending. Ask for forgiveness, right? Yeah. yeah. It's uh yeah. oops. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I had the the problem is I had the button on automatic and it just goes all yeah, the way it through. It just happened. I it just, was already I don't done. Know. I don't know. It's already here. Might as well keep it. <laughs> yeah. We'll use it. I meant, well, I meant to tell you. Yeah, yeah. See, I was watching out for you. I bought you a new case. <laughs> Didn't want you to break that new phone. I like it. We got it. We got it together, man. I like it. That's very cool. And and you guys have it for uh, different phone manufacturers, too. I saw um, uh, Samsung, iPhone. I'm sure you guys got a bunch of the Droid ones, the iPad, um, other tablets and stuff interchangeable with that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, typically it's somewhat proprietary, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, the cell phones are so specific, uh, you, you have to match the, the case to the phone and the same things with the iPads and other tablets. Sure, 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 sure. That's very cool. Dude, I, this may be an odd question, but I like, are your cases available in like Verizon stores or Sprint stores or eight 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 or you broke up a little bit there. Oh. Yeah, not sure if we lost it. Uh, maybe it's the snow. Maybe we're, maybe we're the only ones on the show. Okay. Well, it looks like we are now. No, I think he's coming back. Okay. Stand by. Um, yeah, so, uh, I, Scott, I think we are available at most uh, electronic yeah. stores. You can go to an at and Verizon. Yeah, or pelican.com, right? Yeah. yeah, probably the easiest thing to do. Yeah, always, if in doubt, uh, pelican.com will take you. You can locate all of our products. Right, 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 right. Well, I hope they come back. It's going to be hard to do the last five minutes of um, a paddle and fin um, just doing it our first time as a podcast. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're still uh, live anyways. Yeah. 
Why not? I like the, the Chiron is kind of neat, Scott. They have the Chiron go by and then the, the, te the texts come in. Sorry, Brian, are you back? Yeah, sorry, yeah. guys. We had a, a little technical difficulty there. Uh, computers acting up. Must so. be the snow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll blame you got, it. We got a case for your, your, your laptop there, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's the sun out by you guys. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, guys, uh, we just wanted to say thanks again for uh, taking the time out tonight to uh, join us, spread the good word about Pelican, what you guys have to offer and all that good stuff. Um, guys and gals watching, go check out uh, their website. It's just pelican.com. Follow them on Instagram. They got good content that they're putting out of their products being in use. And uh, if you guys are listening on, on the audio podcast, um, go ahead and go scroll down into the show notes, click the tab and, or click the link and it'll take you right to the website. So uh, any final thoughts, guys, anything else? It's just an honor to be on here with you guys and talking to uh, uh, Paddle and Finn crew out there. I mean, that's uh, um, uh, really cool. So I really appreciate you letting us do that, do this for you guys. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, uh, like we tell everybody, man, if you guys uh, have something new coming up, let us know, man. Let's uh, get back together and talk about it. Mm -hmm. so, we will. Um, all right, all you guys and gals, we'll see you on the next one next Thursday. Who we got next Thursday? Who oh, do we got a top Thursday? secret guest. I know who it is. Uh. We're going to keep you in suspense for that one. <clears throat> we're, uh, we're back Thursday, 7 p.m. Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. What is that on the West Coast? We don't even keep track of that. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. And we're keeping these guys from dinner. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. As always, tight lines, smooth paddling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.